Inside a castle, people are discussing the prophecy from Alabaster that is about to happen. The day has turned into night in a forest. In that forest, a boy is trying to catch a beetle. Suddenly, a light appears, and the boy falls from a tree. The boy approaches the spot where the light originated. Suddenly, an old man and a girl emerge from the light. The girl asks for the boy's name. The boy's name is Satu. The girl is surprised, and she asks Satu to call her Heim. She instructs Satu to keep the event he witnessed a secret. She also tells Satu to forget about it so he can be friends with her. Satu is shocked by Heim's words. He thinks he must protect Heim for the rest of his life. Ten years have passed since that day. Inside a house, a girl is waking up a still sleeping Satu. The girl's name is Heim. She has prepared breakfast for Satu. Satu is surprised because Heim woke up early to make such a luxurious meal. Heim feels happy and then smiles at Satu. Satu is shocked when he sees Heim's face. He also notices Heim's chest and is surprised. He didn't expect Heim to change after entering senior high school. Heim doesn't mind. She boasts that she is a princess. Suddenly, Satu is startled because Heim doesn't blink her eyes. She moves her hand and touches Satu's cheek. Satu panics. Turns out Heim is picking up rice stuck on Satu's cheek. She opens her mouth and then eats the rice. Satu explodes, shaking his house. Satu and Heim go out and meet Heim's grandfather. Both of them greet Heim's grandfather. They also bid farewell before heading to school. They walk beside a river. They discuss Satu's father, who hasn't returned until the summer vacation. Heim sympathizes with Satu. Satu sees the ring on Heim's necklace. He remembers when Heim asked him to wear that ring and marry her. Heim gets angry because Satu keeps looking at her precious ring. Satu no longer pays attention to their childhood promise. Heim screams and then they continue their journey to school. In the classroom, all the students are discussing their exam scores. Apparently, Heim got a high score on the exam. She boasts to her friends. Heim's friends are upset because Heim always talks about being a princess. A male student shouts, feeling jealous of Satu. He thinks Satu is dating Heim. Satu explains the misunderstanding. The male student doesn't care and only wants to be Heim's boyfriend. Satu sees a message from Heim inviting him to the summer festival in the evening. He helps to become Heim's boyfriend. The summer festival is begun and is attended by many people. Satu approaches Heim, who is waiting wearing a yukata. He is captivated by Heim. Heim is surprised by Satu's response. Then both of them decide to go to the festival. Heim sees various types of food and feels very happy. She talks to Satu about the time when she and Satu got lost at a festival. Satu holds Heim's hand because he doesn't want to be separated. Heim is impressed by Satu's actions back then. Heim wants to look for food. Satu still hopes to become Heim's boyfriend. They both see unique food displayed at a stall. Heim buys and eats the food. Satu thinks about his relationship with Heim. Heim wants a stuffed toy as a gift. Satu approaches a vendor to win the game. He holds a gun to shoot the target in front of him. He aims and then pulls the trigger of the gun. The bullet bounces irregularly, but eventually hits the prize toy. Satu and Heim feel very happy afterward. The day is turned into night. Satu and Heim go to a shrine inside the forest. Satu intends to execute his plan to win Heim's heart. He is about to speak, but suddenly, fireworks appear far ahead. The fireworks look so beautiful that they make Heim and Satu feel delighted. They both look at the fireworks again. Heim speaks, and it turns out she has a secret she can't tell Satu. Satu becomes excited hearing Heim's words. Turns out Heim wants to move from their current place. Satu misunderstands, and he can only remain silent. He didn't expect Heim to move the next day. Heim wants to move to her grandfather's hometown, which is located very far away. They both return home. Before entering, Heim thinks Satu. She feels happy to enjoy the festival with Satu. Satu is worried about Heim. Heim feels happy and then quickly enters her house. Satu lay on his bed. He pondered about where Heim would move to. Satu felt he didn't know Heim well, even though he had been with her for 10 years. Suddenly, a shining light appeared outside. 
Satu looked at the light and remembered the extraordinary event that had happened the last time the light appeared. Haim stood in front of that light. She was about to leave, but suddenly Sutta came and stopped her. Haim was glad that Satu remembered what had happened. She intended to go to another world and then get married. She couldn't avoid it because she was a princess. Haim bid farewell to Satu. Satu ran, but Haim had already entered the light. Satu was confused, thinking about the choice he had to make. He decided to run and enter the light. The light disappeared and Satu opened his eyes. Satu witnessed the wedding between Haim, a princess, and a prince named Marmarugia's Gazaras. The priest stopped his words as he saw Satu. Haim felt sad seeing Satu. The prince was puzzled when he saw Satu. Suddenly, a winged monster entered the room. Everyone screamed because a hell creature appeared in the place. Haim's grandfather, holding a staff, came forward and decided to face the hell creature. He was surprised to see Satu there too. He was careless, causing the creature in front of him to successfully attack. He thought of a plan. He instructed Haim to give the ring of light to the prince. Haim was shocked and worried about Satu standing right in front of the hell creature. Haim looked at the prince and became confused. She ran and then kissed Satu on the lips. A light appeared and a strange sound was heard from the building. Satu and Haim wore the ring of light belonging to Haim. Haim's grandfather was surprised, while the prince seemed unconcerned about Haim's decision. He threw his sword to Satu. Satu tried to move the sword with both hands. The hell creature approached Satu. Suddenly, the sword held by Satu emitted a sparkling light. Satu moved and swung the sword. He successfully slashed the hell creature, surprising everyone. Satu lost consciousness and fell down. Satu opened his eyes and saw Haim. He was surprised because he found himself sleeping in the royal couple's room. Haim reminded him that they had kissed as part of their previous promise. Satu was shocked and thought that Haim had become his partner. In reality, Haim didn't want to marry the previous prince because she didn't know him. She looked at Satu and couldn't resist kissing him. She apologized for choosing Satu as her hero. Some maids were seen discussing Satu, who it is the Ring King. They were impressed after hearing about Satu, slashing the hell creature. Some men disagreed with the marriage between Haim and Satu. The previous prince seemed unconcerned about it. He thought Haim's choice had nothing to do with her father and the empire. Haim's grandfather came and stopped the argument. He told the men to stop so they could meet his majesty. Haim's grandfather opened the door in the room. Cheers from thousands of people could be heard by Satu and Haim standing on the balcony. Haim's grandfather instructed Satu to speak. Everyone screamed as they awaited the arrival of Satu, the new ring king. Satu had to respond to their expectations. Satu felt confused by this. Then he shouted and declared himself as the ring king who would save the world. Satu soaked in a hot spring bath. He was involved in matters concerning her. Satu didn't mind because he was on break from school. He felt happy that Haim had chosen him as the ring king. Haim and Satu came from different worlds. Satu wanted to stay in Haim's world and protect her forever. He was confident in protecting Haim. Haim remembered when her classmates teased her. Suddenly, Satu king and protected Haim. Haim was glad that Satu hadn't changed. She thanked Satu. Satu looked at Haim's chest. Haim was annoyed with Satu. She told Satu to be careful because the marriage was just a formality. She didn't want Satu to be responsible for the marriage. Satu realized that, but he also felt happy because Haim had chosen him. Haim felt embarrassed after hearing Satu's words. She suspected that Satu liked her as a friend. Satu confirmed Haim's words, and he considered Haim the most important friend to him. Suddenly, a bell rang. Satu, looking puzzled, stood up, startling Haim. It turned out that some hell creatures had arrived at the fortress to find Satu, the Ring King. The guards tried to hold the fortress gate. They also prepared to attack the hell creatures that came to the place. Satu and Haim headed towards the gate. A guard was surprised to see the disheveled clothes of Haim and Satu. The guards explained the ongoing situation. They urged Satu to lend his power and defeat the attacking hell creatures. They seemed to place their hopes on Satu. 
Haim was worried because Satu couldn't fight. Haim's grandfather disagreed with Haim's words and urged Satu to fight because of the ring he was wearing. Satu strengthened his resolve and asked Haim to trust him. He took his spear axe weapon. Haim's grandfather explained that Satu could emit the destructive light against anything he touched. Therefore, the hell creatures could be defeated by Satu using that ring. Satu felt confused, but he wanted to protect Haim by giving his best abilities. Haim ran and kissed Satu again. The guards cheered and showed their support for Satu. Haim told Satu to be careful. Satu raised his weapon and he became enthusiastic.